as early as 1936, almost 100 years ago, uh, it was, there's a Senate document that I love to tease people with that basically says our soil is now so depleted that you could eat continuously and never actually get the nutrients that you need to function from our soil. And this was a document from 1936. And that was before we killed off all of the soil microbiome with herbicides and pesticides and Roundup. And now our plants, our soil are completely devoid of these trace minerals. And sadly, you know, a, a head of lettuce may look like a head of lettuce from over a hundred years ago, but it doesn't contain those same trace minerals. An apple may look like an apple, although now it's the size of a grapefruit, but it doesn't contain any of those minerals anymore. So most people uh, really need to supplement uh, with trace minerals. Now, one place to get it is uh, a high quality sea salt, but adding trace minerals in a supplement is also a good idea. And when it comes to that, what brands do you recommend? Mine. <laughs> what is the product called? <laughs> well, actually I have trace minerals in several of my supplements. And it's, there's, there's too many to name. Okay. So once we get the trace mineral supplement, let's stick on this supplement piece. You know, you, you open that up with talking about how depleted the soils are and how long they've been depleted. It's not just a new thing. What are some of the other supplements when you're working with patients that you recommend to them to at least consider? Well, first of all, um, and I have to get on a soapbox about this every time we are profoundly vitamin D deficient. Uh, almost all Americans are deficient in vitamin D. And vitamin D really isn't a vitamin, it's actually a hormone. And vitamin D controls so much about what's going to happen to us. Uh, I could write a book uh, alone about how important vitamin D. Let me just say this, the University of California, San Diego has a very large uh, vitamin D research unit and they have written, and I certainly agree with them, that the average American uh, needs 9,600 international units of vitamin D a day to have an adequate level. Uh, that's 10,000 international units or 250 micrograms. Uh, the average American, they have never seen vitamin D toxicity up to 40,000 international units a day. Uh, I certainly never have. Uh, I have some people with really leaky gut and a number of autoimmune diseases that will use 40, 45,000 international units a day uh, to get their vitamin D levels up. Uh, personally, if I feel I'm coming down with something, I've got a scratchy throat or runny nose, uh, I'll take uh, 150,000 international units a day of vitamin D3 for three days. That's literally half a million international units. And I've been doing that for well over 20 years and I'm not dead yet. So um, Dr. Hollick from Boston University, who lost his professorship by, he's a dermatologist for telling people to go out in the sun without sunscreen. Uh, that's another story. He's only seen vitamin D toxicity once in his entire career. And that was in a physician who by accident, because of a mislabeling from a compounding pharmacy, was taking a million international units a day for six months. So, uh, the, the myth of vitamin D toxicity is rampant. Uh, it's amazing how important vitamin D is in cancer prevention. It's the most important gut healing compound um, ever discovered. Uh, and yet I have well-meaning oncologists, cancer doctors who 
go apoplectic when they see my patient's vitamin D level of 80, which I think is too low. And they go, oh my gosh, you've got to stop your vitamin D. Uh, you know, it's killing you. It's lethal. And yet, for instance, the Cleveland Clinic and Quest uh, believe correctly that 150 nanograms per milliliter of vitamin D is normal, as in normal, uh, not toxic. And we just have to catch up with the research on this. Well, when it comes to supplements, it becomes really confusing for a lot of reasons. One, we can't all agree on what the optimal level in the body you just discussed. You know, it's it's wide ranging how much we're actually, what experts think we're trying to actually get to. Two is people don't necessarily get the information of what to take. And then three, quality is a problem. So you can see how compounded synergistically I feel for people. How are they supposed to get to the right level? It would take, in our current world, it, would, it takes a lot to figure it all out. Um, I got to tell you, I have a ton of patients who go to Costco and buy their vitamin D. And quite frankly, it works just fine. Um, never seen a problem with it. So uh, when I, you know, before I had a supplement company, I did not sell supplements to my patients. I still don't sell supplements to my patients. I don't have any of my supplements in any of my three offices. They go, well, I want you to sell it to me. I said, no, uh, I'm just as happy if you go to Costco or Trader Joe's. But, you know, I'll tell you, I think mine's better. But, hey, Costco works. How do I know? Because I've got 5,000 patients on Costco vitamin D, and it works just fine. Okay, but that's for vitamin D. Do you feel the same about their fish oil? Their, you know, to me, there's there's vitamin D is one thing. But then when you get into fish oils, like, I don't even know how they do it with their Kirkland brand if they just white label different things. But like, it, it, it's very nuanced and there's such a difference in quality. And there's been even research out there showing that some supplements are mislabeled what's actually in the supplement. So That's very true. quality obviously needs to be a concern. So how do people decipher all that? Yeah, well, we measure omega-3 indexes in all of our patients. So the omega-3 index looks at the amount of EPA and DHA that's attached to your red blood cells for the two months prior to the test. And what we found is at a bare minimum to get a adequate omega-3 index, uh, you need about a, a thousand milligrams of DHA per day. And I tell my patients, look, I don't care particularly how you get that DHA, but I do care that you get about 1,000 milligrams because that'll get us an adequate omega-3 index. Now, why do you want an adequate omega-3 index? And I've written about this in all my books. If you look at people with their omega-3 index, people who have the highest omega-3 index as they age, have the biggest brains and the biggest areas of memory, the hippocampus. People who have the lowest omega-3 index have the literal most shrunken brains and the smallest areas of memory. And sadly, we see a number of well-meaning vegan patients, and I have a lot of vegan patients, who just have absolutely you know zero omega-3 indexes despite the fact that they're downing flaxseed oil like you know like water and they don't realize that we have a very poor system of converting short chain uh, omega-3 fats into long chain omega-3 fats like dha uh and we're not a fish unfortunately so but it's easy to read the back of a label. Now, some of the Costco products have so little DHA that you'd have to consume, I'm exaggerating, 20 capsules a day. Some Costco products, have you can consume four capsules a day and get an adequate level. Uh, a lot of people don't want to consume four, four capsules a day. And some of those are horse pills. I make make a vegan uh, product that will get you little tiny guys uh, and it'll get you adequate DHA and EPA and DPA, but that's another subject. So 
When I start thinking about Costco, though, my head goes to quality. Like, what other ingredients are in those supplements? It's one thing if you're getting your DHA up to that level on the omega-3 index, but, like, how are you doing it? Are, are these farmed fish and they put all these other filler oils and and what do they well, use in the capsules? I, I, for, for me, I, I just, one sec here. I, for me, I'm concerned about all that, like a, a farm fish versus a wild fish versus what's in these as fillers and what's a capsule made out of. Like, I, I'm figured and I'm guessing you take it to that same level. You care about all those steps and pieces. Right. But those, those products, for instance, at Costco are molecularly distilled. And one thing you can do is look for the USP label on a lot of the Costco products. And those have been third-party tested. For instance, all of Gundry MD products we send out to a third-party tester that we have no you know, relationship and say, hey, is what we say in here in there? And most of the quality companies, let's just put it that way, uh, send their products out for third-party testing so that what we say is in there is actually in there. And you know, if it's not in there, we're not going to sell it. All right. So let's leave the quality piece and come back to dosage because I think this is an area for me, I've struggled with this when it comes to fish oil for quite a while. And I like the way you put it with the thousand milligrams of DHA. It makes it really easy for people because you know, there's different dosages on the bottle and, and who knows who comes up with that. And, and if there are other fillers and stuff like that, I really like the simplicity of looking at DHA, making sure whatever dose you're taking, you're getting that thousand milligrams. But do you think about other pieces of that as well? Like the EPA? I'm not too worried about EPA. Um, I am far more worried about DHA because our brain is is about 70% fat. And interestingly enough, half of it is DHA. The other half, which surprises almost everybody, is that evil, nasty omega-6 fat arachidonic acid. Half of our brain's fat is arachidonic acid. And my goodness, if arachidonic acid was so bad for you and evil and inflammatory, then why the heck is half of our brain made from arachidonic acid? And why is it in Japanese studies that just like the levels of DHA are critically important for looking at brain health, the levels of arachidonic acid is also critically uh, important for brain health. Uh, and we have, again, we have active enzyme steps to try and take short chain omega-3 and omega-6 fats and make them long chain omega-6 and omega-3 fats. And we're trying our darndest to get them up to arachidonic acid and DHA. Uh, we have those steps and we know that, you know, two of the essential fatty acids are short-chain omega-3s, uh, alpha-linolenic acid, and short-chain omega-6, linoleic acid. Now, unfortunately, we've gotten that all screwed up in uh, how we're using various seed oils and how we feed our, our animals. But the fact remains, we have a very active enzyme system to try and get these things up to arachidonic acid and DHA because that's what our brain is built from. And there's easy ways to get arachidonic acid. One of the easiest ways is egg yolks. Uh, another really easy way is shellfish. So if people are incorporating those on a regular basis as part of their diet, are they getting enough? Yeah, it looks like it. Um, there's no great simplistic ways for testing for arachidonic acid like there is for the omega-3 index. You can get serum arachidonic acid tests, the pro and you can get serum omega-3 um, DHA tests. The problem with serum tests is that basically tells you what you had to eat yesterday, and it's very unreliable. A lot of uh, companies will base their omega-3 index on serum levels rather than red blood cell levels, and that's to me, a real disservice uh, 
to people who are interested in their health. If you found this video helpful, I think you're going to love this one. A lot of us have been told that we have to drink eight glasses of water a day, at least 64 ounces of water per day. And quite frankly, there is absolutely no valid science where that number came up from. Water flushes sodium out of us.